On Wednesday, April the 10th, 1912, in brilliant sunshine, although the day was cold, the unsinkable pride of the White Star Line left Southampton. She was commanded by Captain Smith, Commodore of the White Star Fleet, and this was to be his last appointment before retiring. A crowd had gathered on the pier to watch her leave her moorings. The Titanic was a new breed of luxury liner. Among her passengers were many of the wealthy and influential, with, according to one calculation, combined assets of 120 million pounds. There was something about the Titanic that was so very formal. It was so stiff. The atmosphere was stiff. The uh, coziness. Uh, well, you know, the kind of get-together feeling. It didn't exist. If you were rich, the decks provided a sumptuous way of life. The band played the gayest tunes and American ragtime dances, and in the splendor of the Café Parisienne, the light melodies of the day. The dining rooms, state rooms, and common rooms were furnished in various periods and styles, so that English gentlemen might sit in rooms panelled and adorned like their own at home. And so that those extra good food inches could be counteracted, they even provided a splendidly equipped gymnasium. On Sunday evening, April the 14th, the night of the gala dinner, the band was playing, the millionaires were drinking at the bar, the Titanic was aglow with glittering lights. Then three rings on the bell gave the alarm from the crow's nest and a shout down the telephone, ice ahead. The time was 11.40. A man came to my door, his teeth were chattering. He said, Madam, get up, get out. Do you know... They're making the women and children leave in lifeboats. But before I went, I locked every window in my three staterooms and closed every trunk and locked every trunk and took the keys with me. Nineteen keys for nineteen trunks. I had all my evening slippers, diamond buckles. No, not real diamonds, but diamond. And I had a wool cap and two fox furs and a paper-thin broad-tailed coat and no underwear and no stockings, but a pair of velvet slippers and these buckles. And I lost a buckle. Well, he said, you'll have to jump now into the lifeboat. I said, jump. With this thing I've got on, what do you think I am, an acrobat or a monkey or something? I can jump. Well, I looked at that lifeboat, swinging out on the davits. Oh, possibly, oh, I don't know by measurements, but it was an awful long way. And down below was the sea. 14 stories below. What if you jumped and you fell between? No. What were the other passengers like in the lifeboat? Well, they never spoke, you see. There's women and children in the boat all night, but they never spoke. They just sat about, sat back down there waiting to get picked up. But you never talked to each other? No, well, we didn't know one another, so we couldn't get in conversation. At 2.20 a.m. on Monday the 15th of April and two and a half hours after she struck the iceberg, the largest liner of float slid beneath the black icy waters to the floor of the Atlantic. The Titanic carried a total of 2,206 passengers and crew. 703 people survived. The total loss of life was 1,503.
the Royal Flying Corps has been born, forerunner of the Royal Air Force. 